And Peter Dawson looks back even further to the days when she sang with Caruso at Covent Garden in the operas that suited them best. Boheme. My goodness, the way she used to carry when she walked off the stage and carry that top C right through when she went off the stage and you could hear that still going away in the distance. Magnificent. A hush and up they would go. They would wave their programs and throw their handkerchief up. Oh, it's, it was really remarkable. The Melbourne Knights, the Gala Knights, the Gala Knights when they had roses. All the theatre decorated with beautiful roses. But nobody, they could hardly breathe. The atmosphere was so charged with the rose aroma mm. that it affected the singing. And the scintillating diamonds, the diamonds of the aristocracy that attended the old Covent Garden uh, nights there. The atmosphere was simply marvellous because the, the dressing rooms were all in, in sort of corridors. But the biggest ones, of course, and the largest was Dame Nellie's. As she was the principal singer, and nobody could depose her, and she could, uh, no, could stop any uh, singer from coming there to sing. And one was mentioned, I think, it was Tetrazzini. She hadn't a chance of even getting in there with a tin opener while Nellie was there. But as soon as Nellie went, in came Tet. Well, anyway, this and it had uh, Melba, great letters. Melba, silence, silence. On the dressing room? Mm, silence everywhere on the stage, and they used to watch. And whenever she came out of her dressing room to come across to enter whatever set she was going to, to sing on, all these crept away like mice out of sight. They wore plimsoll shoes so they wouldn't make any noise. <laughs> 